Hey, this is Blake Nature Live, and we're here with John. Here's one of his yards that he does um, edible landscaping. Hi. This is a uh, not edible. It's an ornamental, the Guizhou cycad. It's a pretty rare species from China. So check it out. Look how the leaves look. They almost look like the the other species that a lot of people buy. Queen sago. Yeah. And he got these seeds. Where do you get these seeds at? From China back in the 90s. The white bird of paradise. Some seedlings. This is doing really papayas. good. I like to plant the papayas at the end of the year. Uh -huh. And then that way they're ready to start flowering in the spring. So you just protect them over the winter. And then you actually get some fruit. But these are looking really good. What is this one right here? This is an African potato mint. Learned uh, the use of this from some of the permaculture guys down south. They put this on the edge of the beds and it outgrows the grass so you don't have to do any weeding when, you know, at the edge of the bed. Uh -huh. This outgrows the grass and it also makes little potatoes. That is so cool. That way you don't have to it's an edible pull the border. weeds up and you can eat it. Yeah. Um, this is a lime uh, on trifoliate orange. It's got a lemon and a couple varieties of lime grafted to it. Um, this one is resistant to greening. Perfect. So, so, so which one is this one that's grafted onto it? That's a Harvey lemon. That's your most cold hardy true lemon. And then the other one's up here? A thorn mosquito lime here. Oh cool. There yeah. it is. And there's a lime quat grafted here somewhere, but I don't know. I don't see it. But it, what, Walter might have cut it off. He might have. This is an apple tree? or This is an apple. So in a Geneva uh, 41 dwarf root stock, it's multi-grafted. Okay. Um, it's young. And you have the different varieties on it? Yeah, about 15 varieties. So nice. Far, There's a Frankenstein one. one. It's like a Frankenstein yeah. fruit tree. Well, get the benefit of 15 different varieties without having the trouble of 15 different trees. Right. Have it in one spot. This is a kiwi and grape trellis. This is the newest is project. so cool. He's got a few different varieties here. Some from Alabama, some hardy kiwis. And this one's doing the best for right now. And then he has the, what was the species over here? This one right here? This is called the hardy kiwi or the arguda. So right now it's defoliated. Yep, they're deciduous. This one's really hardy, has a small fruit on it. Grape kiwis, they call them. They taste similar to the other kiwis? They, they taste the same, they just, they don't have any fuzz and they're smaller. Okay. Satsuma, Kimbro, this one's also multi-grafted. I put a Zaishan, a very early one on it. This is the most cold hardy commercial citrus, the Satsuma. And how old are these trees, John? Uh, planted in 2007. And they're doing really good here. They're really healthy. The mandarins are s slow growers. They're smaller. Right. This is Pongkan. Um, if anybody's familiar with pond can, you're probably not used to seeing them this shape. Yeah, I like how it's all leaned over. You, you said you pulled a lot of the limbs down? Yeah, you can see you can see some strings there, We and then over here. Uh -huh. uh, pond can and satsuma, I think, need pruning and training. This is a peach. It's two years old. It's grafted on MP29. Uh -huh. That rootstock's resistant to Armillaria, also called oak root fungus. You can see where it's bigger on the top. They uh, were, of course, multi-grafting all right. of this with different peaches and plums. And you said you have to, these stone fruits, you have to pull the, the leaves off to make them fruit yeah. better the next year. Well, we're not getting freezes like we used to, and the tree doesn't know when it's winter if the leaves never freeze off, so you have to come in and take each one off. manually take the leaves off. It's like an arm workout. <laughs> so it gets a dormancy. That is so cool. Um, this a lot is, of people don't know about that. Yeah, yeah. I learned it from uh, a book by Kufel Kuf Creek, California, warm climate, grown apples in warm climates. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where he learned it from. Apparently, they grow apples in Brazil and Indonesia in tropical environments. And a lot of people don't know about that. They grow two hundred thousand tons of apples a year in Indonesia. That blows people's minds. Blows my mind. Same here. What kind um, is this one? This is Page. Page is a complex Florida hybrid. I guess you'd call it a tangelo. Uh -huh. It's uh, got the productivity and disease resistance you get. You would have in oranges and grapefruits, but the fruit quality of a mandarin. Okay. 
really delicious and it's bigger. I love the size of it. They're all the same age. This these trees have been heavily pruned. They're, and you've already picked the fruit off it looks like. Yeah. Most of it. I, I know this one right here. Here's my baby. Little Layla. Yeah, can you see the, the mound? The mound, I see the mound. Let's go look at the mound. We have clay soil here in northern Florida, so you, you can't dig a hole in it because then you'd be planting in a bucket of water and that's a famous way of killing plants around here. So there was no hole. It was actually planted on a mound of clean washed sand. And look how healthy it's doing. This is, I guess, probably the beginning of the fifth year. It's so beautiful. How big it is. And this is Layla. It can handle what, 15 degrees? Yeah, well, we've had it, fantastic. We had it down to 14 and it didn't have a yellow leaf. Wow. It looks very he healthy to me. All this, all the citrus had some very insignificant damage. Even the satsuma had some singed leaves that winter, but uh, I didn't believe really that these, good. these avocados are that cold hardy until I saw it. But they are. I can't wait for mine to get to that size. Some sort of a red grape, grapefruit. Don't it's know what. It's like a flame, I think. Okay. It's a big one too. Here's a huge one. Look right. yeah. how green the leaves are. I think this is interesting. Uh, it's grafted on trifoliate orange. Oh, cool. And the graft union's up here. And you, you see how much bigger it is. You can see how fluted and tapered the trunk is at the bottom. Mm -hmm. You get a, not really an incompatibility, but a growth rate mismatch when you graft them low. You can see how, it, how it's not even. Yeah, but if you see the stem smooths out higher up, so I learned that in Italy they graft them at about um, three feet. Hmm. It's a Meyer lemon. You can see there's a lot of vigorous vertical vegetative growth. Um, all that needs to be cut off. And the fruit help. production is in the sideways growing lateral stuff. Uh huh. Um, this stuff will shade the fruit producing stuff and you'll have some uh, when the trees are young uh, Good years and bad years alternate mm -hmm. bearing So that's why pruning really helps. Yeah controlling that vertical vegetative growth if you could if you needed a branch It would be better to pull the branch to the horizontal and Then it would start making fruit, but we don't need a branch here. So uh -huh. the only option is to cut it off it's amazing how just by pulling it down creates that production. They have um, hormones that respond to gravity. I see you have a big mango behind you. This is oh my shawl. gosh! There was a mango here in in Tallahassee. Cog shawl is one of the condo mangoes or dwarf mangoes. It makes a full size fruit, excellent fruit, um, but it's easy to keep it contained. Uh huh. And this is the south side. South side of the house. Uh, how nice much heat do you think the, the wall puts off? I think it's 10 degrees warmer right here on average. Because it looks very, very happy here. Than other parts of town where it would be more exposed and in a colder spot. Yeah. Let's look at the little trunk of we're, it. We're not even in January yet. And you can see the flower buds are swelling. So That's right. This thing thinks, here. It thinks we're in a, a much warmer climate. That tells you things are changing. Let's look at the trunk of it. You can tell them how did you do the the the, pr the pruning and the... I, I recommend looking at dr. Richard Campbell's uh, Videos on dwarf mango pruning. That's where I learned to do it. Um, he explains it really well but what I did is um, When I planted it I bent the trunk sideways and that two foot trunk off the ground is the only permanent thing and then the fruiting wood grows up for several years vertically and then every time it makes a growth flush I pinch it to get it to branch out because they bear on the tips okay um, mangoes and avocados are tip bearing so you want a low network of branches with a lot of tips and then you got to quit pruning in the fall so that these tips can mature these flower buds for flowering in the winter and the spring but like I said dr. Campbell goes into it he's got detail. it all figured out yeah. you're doing a great job about it yeah. put some pineapples up here Gonna have some pineapple soon. Any popping up yet? Not yet. These are young. These are two years old. You said it takes about three years for that. Three to four. When you're planting from the top, 
Okay. So these were the tops of pineapples. So if you do from the pups, they, they'll make, what, a year or two years? A yeah, one? nine months. Okay. Sometimes. Um, this is a uh, Honey Bell Tangelo. That's the one that I had bought, I think. Honey Bell? Or no, I got the Sugar Bell. Sugar Bell, yeah. Sugar Bell is Honey Bell back crossed with a Clementine. And awesome. Sugar Bell is more disease resistant. Yeah, I see the sh different shape in the fruit. They have really nice red fruit on it. This is a collection of all my favorite. This one, this one in the page are the finest flavored citrus I've had. This is Shira Nui. Um, sold under the Sumo brand name in California, grown and sold. Um, but it, it's... And they, they peel really good too, don't they? It re peel really well. It's really sweet. It's more orangey than, they're kind of ugly, but more orangey than you think an orange can be. Right. Um, very soft to eat. Um, just delicious. They say they don't do well in Florida, but they do well in North Florida. What's you, the reason of that? The... I think we're colder. Mandarins are colder. They okay. like a colder climate. You see this shoot that's growing vigorously, vertically. See how it has thorns? Oh yeah. That's a, it's, it's reverted to a juvenile growth habit. So that's that's making wood, not flowers. So if you were to bend this sideways, it would start creating. It would it would make the twiggy, flowers. thornless, fruit producing wood. Okay. And see, a lot of people don't know about that. Just the simple uh, moving it around or tr or trimming it will make yeah. a whole big difference. That's why they call it pruning and training. It's not just cutting stuff off. Sometimes cutting stuff off is counterproductive. You also the tree has to have the right shape. Mm -hmm. Now most trees and plants are going to fruit on the, the small sideways growing twiggy stuff, mm -hmm. but there's some exceptions. Papayas obviously fruit on vertical shoots. Figs also fruit best on vertical shoots. So plants have a fruit producing part mm -hmm. and you want to, once the tree is a mature size, you want to encourage the fruit producing part and discourage the growth of wood. Correct. And so by giving them too much nitrogen, That'll you're, cause that. Yeah, you're encouraging them to drop the fruit and Put make more wood. production on the wood. What you got here? Valencia. I used to think the Valencias, because the fruit needs to hang on a tree for 18 months, I thought they were a bad choice this far north, but it turns out when they're grafted on the cold hardy rootstocks, uh -huh. it makes not only the leaves more cold tolerant, but also the fruit. How about that? So we so don't the get, fruit don't get knocked off? Not until we get down to low 20s. And this hasn't been really happening in the last few years. So we're able to pull. So that's a win-win. We're able to pull off these crops. This is a persimmon, a fuyu persimmon. Um, the fuyu persimmon and the Meyer lemon and the pancan, pong, they all have this same habit of wanting to grow a lot of vigorous vertical vegetative shoots mm -hmm. that shades out your fruiting wood. Oh, I see that. So you want to cut that stuff off and pull it sideways. That way the fruit are able to get sun and yeah. produce. You can see the flower scars from last year. It's all on the, the horizontal twiggy growth. You, there's none on the the vertical stuff is making wood. It's a nice size one too. Yeah, so the uh, if you let it grow, and this one, this yard's over fertilized, so you might have six or eight feet of vertical shoots growing up. Mm -hmm. That would shade out the fruit producing wood. And it wouldn't produce next year because it's starved, couldn't photosynthesize right. and build up carbohydrates. So that's why persimmons um, go into alternate bearing. There's some excellent articles uh, on persimmon pruning and training from New Zealand. Uh -huh. I had to read them a lot before I understood it. Now, now, at least in my own words, I understand what it is, is that the horizontal stuff, the horizontal twigs are gonna make the flowers, but they also be, have to be healthy. Right. So they have to be exposed to the sun throughout the growing season. You can't have the vertical stuff taking all the nutrients to make wood and shading the fruit producing part. Star fruit are semi-tropical or subtropical. They're um, similar to lemons and limes, they're ever bearing. They will produce multiple crops a year. They can take about 25 or 26 degrees before they start to have problems. Um, this one was also growing vertically, so we 
we tied the branches down and as soon as we did it started making flowers but how about when do, when do the flowers make coming up or they, they they flower and produce several times throughout the year so this is a plant a lot of people need in their yard yeah. they're very productive and what and, was this one called again uh, it's either Arkin or carry I can't remember but um they the star a lot of people have had star fruit from the store and they don't taste so good uh -huh. This is a fruit that really has to get ripe on a tree to taste well. Okay. You can't pick it green and expect it to be any good. So, you, but you'll have better tasting fruit if you wait, especially grow it your own because the ones in the store are not that flavorful. I've ch I've changed a lot of people's opinions by giving them a, a fresh fruit off the tree, and and if it does, you know, get into the mid twenties, we'll cover the tree. Okay. I gotta get me one of these growing. This fig tree is huge over here. And I like how you designed it and pruned it. Yeah, I like the, the shape look. of it. I like the looks of a fig on a single point. I like the look. Yeah, definitely this one. It's more beautiful to the. It, it has a nice shape to it. It feels to me. Now with this style, what was what, what kind of style of pruning is this called? Um, this was. Uh, I, I, ori I originally was pruning this one just to maximize the number of figs like you were going to can figs mm -hmm. but that doesn't maximize fruit quality right. that makes a ton of little figs and only one time during the year um, we're trying the, what they call a Japanese fig pruning style where all, all of these shoots would be pruned off like you're like you're doing spur pruning on a grape mm -hmm. and then each season a new shoot would grow and this would continually produce new figs until the frost. The highest quality figs are going to be produced on these vigorous vertical shoots. Okay. Um, and you can read about Japanese fig pruning. I like how the way you pulled it over, it looks you know, really unique. Yeah. Well, it gives you different space We're in the training. Requirements. We're trying to train it to a single and plane I, right now. Uh -huh. I see you're using the, the bamboo yep. to hold it down I like that. So what kind of what kind of banana trees are these? That's Orinoco. That's the one that I had tried. Yep. It, it tasted really delicious. Yeah. Orinoco was the first banana brought um, to the Americas on one of Columbus's voyages, and it's the one with the longest tradition in the Deep South. It's kind of a plantain type. Mm -hmm. um, it's not the most cold tolerant. It's not the most disease resistant, but it's a pretty good choice. I like them. I like it too. I like They're, the idea you can actually cook it like a plantain. You can see we haven't really had much frost yet. There's still green leaves. Not at all. Just got just the lightest hint of frost. I like how tall they get. They what do you think about the ice cream? The ice cream. Uh... Ice cream and Brazilian. The dwarf Brazilian and ice cream are the my two favorite. Ice cream is actually what they call Namwa. Okay. At least what we call ice cream in Florida is Namwa. So there's several varieties of Namwa. Namwa is an excellent choice for Northern Florida. Okay. And the dwarf Brazilian, also called a Hawaiian apple, is an excellent choice. There's a there's a lot of good ones though. I might have, have to try them out. Ten or fifteen that I really like. But you have a few of the ice cream and the other species on your property. Yeah, Quincy. Mm -hmm. He has a really cool nursery he's got going on. So everyone needs to get in contact with John. He'll help you out. QuincyNursery.com. He'll blow your mind. I don't know if you can see it, we're getting dark, but uh, this yard has a thin topsoil before you get to clay. So there's poor drainage in the summer and the blueberries were actually dying, even though they had 12 inches of topsoil. You can see how high it is. So we had to redo a raised bed and with drip irrigation. And these trees that are only, you know, starting their third season are bigger than the 10 Hey, this is Blake's Nature Live. Hope you enjoy the video with John. We're going to be doing some more videos. I hate that we had to cut it short. It got too dark. It was a last minute thing. Honest is chilling with me. She's about ready to go outside. We're finishing up some editing. I'll catch you later.